Hey guys, welcome back to the Overland Diaries. It's me, Connor. We are currently in the beautiful Olympic National Forest, just outside of the park itself, on our own private beach for the evening. Uh, we wanted to talk to you guys today about something very, very basic for camping, which is building a campfire. So the first thing that you're going to need to do in building a campfire is making a fire pit. So for that, you're going to need some stones, which is why we are here, to get some rocks. So I want to get a couple big ones for building the edge of my campfire pit. Thank you, Quachie. Okay guys, so the next step in making your fire pit campfire is essentially digging the pit itself. Uh, as you can see, we're in a campsite just off of Forest Road 29 in the Olympic National Forest. So there's already a fire ring here. Uh, Quache is very excited about that. Uh, so, but as you can see, there's already a kind of a crudely done pit here. I kind of approved upon it a little bit, but you can get the basic idea. What you want to do is just dig a kind of basic hole. And then from that, you're going to put your rocks all around there, which I'm going to improve upon now. And the reason for doing this is to keep the fire in the pit, as well as keeping so much wind from blowing in and putting out your fire. But mainly, it is for keeping the fire in the pit, which is the important part, especially when the National Forest, we do not want any forest fires. And that should do for tonight. <laughs> oh, well, hello again. Welcome back. Now that we have our fire pit, all we need now for a campfire is some firewood. Now guys, you could go to a grocery store or stop along the side of the road and you could buy some campfire from anywhere between five and $10, which is all fair and good. You could do that if you like. However, when camping in the national forest or in BLM lands, the odds are you're gonna be able to find plenty of free firewood wherever it is you're camping, uh, especially if you're doing dispersed camping like we like to do. Um, for example, as you can see here, there is plenty of wood around us, which I'm about to start gathering. And then from that, we will have plenty for the evening for us to have a really nice fire. So guys, like I said, I would highly recommend that when you get to your campsite, look around. Odds are you can scrounge up enough firewood, especially out in the west. The wood is dry enough that it will burn just nicely. So I really recommend that instead of buying firewood, you go out and get it yourself. So guys, as you can see, I have gathered all of my firewood. What I try to do usually is I kind of gather it into three different piles. Uh, first and foremost, you're going to need your little kindling wood here, which is just a bunch of little sticks, which I gathered from the ground. As you can see, this is what you're going to use to get the fire going. 
Now, once you've got your fire going, you're gonna get it nice and hot, but before you can throw your big logs on, you're gonna to have to throw on these little medium-sized guys that I've gotten here. So that's why I have kind of a medium-sized pile. Those logs, like I said, are for getting the fire nice and hot and getting it ready for the big logs, which I have right here. And again, guys, like I said, when you're camping out in the National Forest, it's pretty easy to find your own firewood. All of this firewood I just gathered from right around here, then a 10 meter radius of the fire pit itself. And I didn't even need to use my ax to break up the firewood. I just used this log right here and cracked them pretty good uh, with a good swing. And there you go, you have firewood for the evening. So in a few minutes, I'll be showing you guys how to actually light the fire, which is seems to be the toughest thing most people have when starting a campfire is actually lighting it itself. So I'm gonna show you guys a really simple way to light a campfire. And, uh, and like I said, you'll be able to use the firewood that we have provided here from the National Forest itself. So, anyway, I'm gonna edit that part out. So, okay. Okay guys, on a couple of side notes, I wanted to mention that tonight we are camping just outside of a place called Forks, Washington, which apparently is the home of the Twilight series of books. So, who knows? We're camping amongst the vampires tonight. I also wanted to mention when we came in here to check out the site to see if it was worth camping in, which by the way, it obviously is. I kind of backed into this mess right here, and as you can see, I put a nice big uh, rut in the ground here, but I just wanted to say thanks to Up and Over Off-Road and our 96 ZJ. She had zero problem getting out of there. It was like driving over smooth asphalt. So, very, very thankful for our rig. Uh, mud is no problem for us. So guys, we'll see you guys in just a few minutes, and we'll tell you how to light the campfire. All right guys, now that we've enjoyed a lovely meal, it's time to enjoy a nice campfire. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and get things lighted here. Uh, it's very simple, what I like to do is I like to gather a little bit of uh, dried leaves and pine needles and little sticks that you see lying all around the ground here from the forest floor. So I gather those up and I make a little pile here. And then I take a little bit of a piece of a paper towel and I put it there and then I make a little teepee with my little bits of uh, kindling wood. And now I'm gonna use a very essential tool when camping, which is a lighter. Uh, you're gonna definitely need to have a lighter with you at all times whenever you go camping so you can light your fire, so you can light your stove. So even if you're a non-smoker, you need to make sure you carry a lighter with you. So I'm just lighting the paper towel here and light it on both ends. Sometimes it takes a second to get going. We are in supposedly one of the rainiest parts of the country, sees the least amount of sunshine. Okay, so now that she's going a little bit, all I'm gonna need to do is just keep adding these little sticks to the fire here so she keeps going. I'm just gonna keep adding all the little kindling sticks until I'm done with those, and then I will start adding the medium-sized sticks. And then by the time those medium ones have burned, I'll have a good pile of coals going so I can start putting on my big logs. Okay, so now that I've got her going, all I'm gonna do is just keep adding these little bits of kindling wood until I'm out of them. That way the fire's going nice and hot enough for me to get these medium-sized ones on there. And then I'm gonna basically just do the same. I'm gonna burn down those medium-sized uh, little pieces of wood until we're ready for the big logs because when those medium ones are done, the coal should be hot enough for the big logs and then that way we can really sit and enjoy the fire and have some nice s'mores which my wife loves so much Yay! Uh, well guys we hope you enjoyed the video and even more we hope you get out there and enjoy your own campfire now that you know how to make one uh, also please remember only you can prevent wildfires guys so make sure to put your fire out properly I cannot stress that enough uh, guys, also please make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here at The Overland Diaries. Also please check out our blog at TheOverlandDiaries.com. Make sure to like and follow us on Twitter, YouTube, 
Instagram, all those social media channels, guys. Please make sure to get out there and like us. We'd much appreciate it. Uh, again, thank you guys very much for tuning in, and we look forward to talking to you next time. Take care.